Hello viewers, welcome to the channel. My name is Ayantika and today I am going to discuss the literary devices used in the poem Skimble Shanks the Railway Cat by T.S. Eliot. Skimble Shanks the Railway Cat by T.S. Eliot is a narrative poem that tells us about an extraordinary cat performing extraordinary duties on the train known as Nightmare. We may consider Skimble Shanks as an overseer or manager of the train, showing meticulous attention to each and every detail. Now, let us discuss the literary devices used in the poem. The first literary device that I would like to discuss is the rhyme scheme of the poem. Now, in the poem, the rhyme scheme is A, B, C, B, D, E, F, E. However, this rhyme scheme is not consistent throughout the poem. Okay, now the rhyme scheme that has been used in the poem creates a spontaneous flow in the poem by combining both regularity that means through repeated rhymes and variation through alternating rhymes. Okay, let me analyze the first stanza and show you one example. There is a whisper down the line at 11.39 when the night male is ready to depart, saying, Skimble, where is Skimble? Has he gone to hunt the thimble? We must find him or the train can't start. When the first and the third lines do not rhyme, we mark the rhyme structure in these lines as A and C. Okay, that means when the first line and the third line do not match, we mark the rhyme structure in those lines as a and C. Okay. Similarly, when these lines rhyme, we mark them as B. Okay. For example, the second and the fourth line in this case. Now I am going to read one part and explain the literary devices used. There is a whisper down the line at 11.39 when the nightmare is ready to depart. Saying, Skimble, where is Skimble? Has he gone to hunt the thimble? We must find him. Or the train can't start. Now, in the very first line, the word whisper helps create auditory imagery. Therefore, it can be considered as an example of onomatopoeia. Okay, the first part of line number three, saying skimble, very skimble, shows examples of repeated consonants. That is why it is an example of alliteration. This part of the line also enhances the playful and whimsical tone of the poem. Reading the next part. All the guards and all the porters and the station master's daughters, they are searching high and low, saying skimble, very skimble, for unless he is very nimble, then the nightmare just can't go. Next line, line number six. They are searching high and low. This is an example of hyperbole because this phrase uses exaggeration emphasize Skimble Shank's importance. In the next line, line number 7, the phrase saying Skimble, very Skimble is an example of a repetition. Okay, and this part is repeated in order to emphasize the urgency and importance of finding Skimble Shank's, the railway cat. Now, in the same line, that is line number 7, the word nimble rhymes with skimble and it shows example of assonance by using repetition of vowel sounds. Reading the next part of the poem. At 11.42 then the signals nearly do and the passengers are frantic to a man. Then skimble will appear and will saunter to the rear. He has been busy in the luggage van. In line number 9 the phrase the signals near Litio is an example of visual imagery. Since the poet uses language that creates mental pictures or visual images. Okay. Next. Next, line number 10. And the passengers are frantic to a man. This line is an example of hyperbole. Because the poet uses exaggeration to emphasize the anxiety or heightened anticipation of the passengers before the departure of the night mail. Now, 
students please notice that in the same line that is line number 10 and the passengers are frantic to a man the phrase a man is a metaphor that represents skimble shanks the railway cat the phrase a man in this line is a metaphorical representation of skimble shanks crucial role in preparation for the departure of the train next line line number 11 then skimble will appear and will saunter to the rear the phrase saunter to the rear is a metaphor because it actually refers to skimble shanks the word saunter is an example of onomatopoeia since whenever we hear the word saunter it creates a mental picture or auditory imagery okay next line line number 12 he's been busy in the luggage van the phrase busy in the luggage van is an example of a metaphor because this phrase refers to skimble shanks the railway cat now the phrase luggage van is an example of an imagery since it is visually descriptive next reading from line number 13 he gives one flash of his glass green eyes and the signal goes all clear and we are off at last for the northern part of the northern hemisphere in line number 13 he gives one flash of his glass green eyes the phrase flash of his glass green eyes is an example of a metaphor since the poet uses metaphorical language to describe skimble shanks commanding presence however the phrase glass green eyes is visually descriptive therefore it is considered as an imagery the phrase northern gets repeated in lines 15 and 16 for example and we are off at last for the northern part of the northern hemisphere this is done in order to create a rhythmic pattern and emphasizes on the destination of the night mail reading the next part you may say that by and large it is Kimball who is in charge of the sleeping car express from the driver and the guards to the bagmen playing cards he will supervise them all more or less in line number 17 the phrase skimble who is in charge of the sleeping car express is an example of personification because skimble shanks the cat has been given human like characteristics or qualities similar to humans in line number 18 from the driver and the guards to the bagman playing cards now here the phrases the driver and the guards and bagman playing cards these two are examples of consonants since the consonant sounds in these phrases are repeated next line line number 19 he will supervise them all more or less this line is an example of personification here the personification of a cat as a supervisor of the train adds a whimsical and imaginative element in the poem next line number 20 down the corridor he paces and examines all the faces of the travelers in the first and the third in line number 20 both the phrases down the corridor he paces and examines all the faces show visual description and therefore are considered as visual imagery in line number 22 he establishes control by regular patrol the phrase he establishes control is an example of personification since the cat skimble shanks has been given human like qualities by the poet for example supervising and establishing control just like humans reading from line number 23 and he'd know at once if anything occurred he will watch you without winking and he sees what you are thinking and it's certain that he doesn't approve of hilarity and riot so the folk are very quiet when skimble is about and on the move line number 23 and he'd know at once if anything occurred is an example of a hyperbole since it exaggerates and emphasizes skimble shanks abilities as an overseer of the train
In line number 24, the phrase, he will watch you without winking, is an example of alliteration since the consonant words get repeated. And please notice that in the same line, the phrase, he sees what you are thinking, is an example of hyperbole. Because here, the poet exaggerates Skimbleshank's abilities, such as his ability to know whatever the passengers are thinking. This touch of hyperbole is added for artistic effect. Line 25 and 26 show example of irony. The ironic tone in this part adds humor, showing the seriousness of Skimbleshank's role. Reading from line 28. You can play no pranks with Skimbleshanks. He is a cat that cannot be ignored. So nothing goes wrong on the northern mail when Skimbleshanks is aboard. Line number 29. He is a cat that cannot be ignored is an example of a hyperbole. This phrase again uses exaggeration to emphasize Skimbleshanks' role and his importance for a smooth and Trouble-free journey on the night mail. Reading from line 32. Oh, it's very pleasant when you have found your little den with your name written upon the door. And the berth is very neat with a newly folded sheet. And there's not a speck of dust on the floor. Look at line number 34. Here, the phrase berth is very neat is an example of consonants since the consonant sounds are repeated. And in the same line, the phrase a newly folded sheet is an imagery since it uses language that creates mental pictures or visual imagery. Line number 35 And there is not a speck of dust on the floor. This line is another example of hyperbole since it uses exaggeration to emphasize the cleanliness of the night mail train. Reading from line number 36 there is every sort of light, you can make it dark or bright. There is a handle that you can turn to make a breeze. There is a funny little basin you are supposed to wash your face in and a crank to shut the window if you sneeze. In line number 38, the phrase funny little basin uses visual description. That is why it is an example of visual imagery. In the next line, that is line number 39, the word Crank is an example of onomatopoeia since it helps generate auditory imagery. Reading from line number 40. Then the guard looks in politely and will ask you very brightly, Do you like your morning tea weak or strong? But Skimble's just behind him and was ready to remind him, for Skimble won't let anything go wrong. In line number 40, the phrase looks in politely and will ask you very brightly is an example of consonants since the consonant words get repeated. Next, in line number 41, the phrases behind him and remind him are again examples of consonants since consonant words are repeated. Next, line number 43, for Skimble won't let anything go wrong. This is an example of irony since being a cat, Skimble Shanks actually doesn't have the power to stop anything from going wrong in the night mail train. Okay, but the irony in this line adds a humorous touch. Next, reading from line number 44. And when you creep into your cozy berth and pull up the counterpane, you ought to reflect that it's very nice to know that you won't be bothered by mice. You can leave all that to the railway cat the cat of the railway train. In line number 44, the phrase cozy birth gives visual description. Therefore, it is an example of visual imagery. Next, line number 47, to know that you won't be bothered by mice is an example of irony since almost throughout the poem, we have come to know about the cleanliness of the night mail train. Next line, line number 48. You can leave all that to the railway cat. This line is an example of hyperbole since it uses exaggeration to emphasize on Skimbleshank's capabilities as the supervisor of the train. 
Next, reading from line number 50. In the watches of the night, he is always fresh and bright. Every now and then, he has a cup of tea with perhaps a drop of scotch while he is keeping on the watch. Only stopping here and there to catch a flea. Line number 50 is an example of assonance since it shows repetition of vowel sounds within the lines of the poem, therefore creating internal rhyme. Please note that in the same line, the phrase fresh and bright is an example of a metaphor because metaphorical language has been used to convey the cat's lively and friendly nature. Line number 52 with perhaps a drop of scotch while he is keeping on the watch is an example of assonance since again we can see repetition of vowel sounds within the lines of the poem. Reading from line number 54. You were fast asleep at Crewe, so you never knew that he was walking up and down the station. You were sleeping all the while he was busy at Carlisle, where he greets the station master with elation. In line number 54, the phrase fast asleep at Crewe is another example of assonance since here we can see repetition of vowel sounds. Next, line number 55, that he was walking up and down the station. This line shows visual description, therefore it is an example of visual imagery. Next, line number 57, where he greets the station master with elation. This line as well gives visual description, therefore it is an example of visual imagery. Reading from line number 58, but you saw him at Dumfries where he speaks to the police. If there's anything they ought to know about. When you get to Gallogate, there you do not have to wait, for Skimbleshanks will help you get out. In line number 58, the phrase speaks to the police shows visual description. Therefore, it is an example of visual imagery. Next, reading from line 62. He gives you a wave of his long brown tail, which says, I'll see you again. You will meet without fail on the midnight mail, the cat of the railway train. In line number 62, the phrase long brown tail is a metaphor because this phrase has been used as a metaphorical language in order to convey Skimble Shanks, the railway cat. Next, line number 65, the last line of the poem, the cat of the railway train. Now students, if you notice, you will see that this line, the cat of the railway train has been repeated in the last line of the previous stanza as well. Okay, therefore, we can say that this line is an example of repetition. Okay, the repetition of the last line tells us about the importance and role of Skimble Shanks in the maintenance and supervision of the night mail train. So, throughout the poem, we have noticed that Skimble Shanks symbolizes order and control, representing the importance of discipline and responsibility in the proper functioning of the night mail. In short, the poet skillfully employs rhyme scheme, repetition, personification, irony, imagery, visual imagery, onomatopoeia to create a whimsical and